Hi guys, I'm Melissa. Welcome back to cloudmom.com and to the series I'm doing on your first year with your baby. This is week six. Let's talk a little bit about a full term baby at six weeks of age and then I'll talk a little bit about premature babies and give you an update on my little preemie, Gracie. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that babies have regular checkups when they're born three to five days after birth, and then at months one, two, four, six, nine, twelve, and eighteen. At your baby's one month checkup, make sure you schedule the checkup for two months, or if you haven't yet done so, make that checkup appointment now. Your pediatrician will continue to track your baby's growth against similarly aged babies, most likely using the information provided by the World Health Organization. For the first six months of life, your baby likely will gain five to seven ounces or 140 to 200 grams a week. So figure that by week six, your baby will have gained 30 to 42 ounces or 1.8 to 2.6 pounds, which equals 840 grams to 1.2 kilos. Your baby will still be fascinated by their fingers and toes, and you'll see them spending a lot of time stretching out and admiring themselves. Lock fingers with your baby so that you can help them practice their grasping reflex. Put your baby down for tummy time several times a day so that they can strengthen their upper back and their neck muscles, but remember to never leave your baby unattended on their stomach. Talk and read to your baby and mimic their cooing sounds back at them to stimulate their language development. At around six weeks of age, babies start to do a social smile, which is an intentional smile and not like the smile that you might have noticed them making in their dreams or when they pass gas. As innocent as a smile might seem, this is a sign that your baby's communication skills are developing and that their brain development is on track. As a general rule, the more premature a baby is, the longer it will take that baby to catch up. So if like me, you have a preemie, remember to be patient with regard to all these milestones. This week, you should have an appointment with your OBGYN. This is also known as your postnatal appointment or six week check. If you had an episiotomy, I had one with my first baby, your OB will wanna take a look at your stitches and your perineum to make sure that everything is healed properly. Your OB will wanna take a look at your tummy to make sure that your uterus has gone back to its size. And if you had a C-section, they'll most likely wanna take a look at your scar to check on the healing. Your OB will most likely advise you to start doing pelvic floor exercises if you haven't already. There are lots of accessories you can buy to help you do pelvic floor exercises, but the simplest way is to familiarize yourself by trying to stop the flow of urine, which you shouldn't do so often because this can be bad for your bladder, but that's how you get used to actually exercising these muscles. You can also imagine yourself sitting on and squeezing a marble. Sit comfortably and without holding your breath or squeezing your butt or your stomach muscles, squeeze those inner muscles for three to five seconds and do this 10 to 15 times. Over time, you'll start to notice a difference, but you should keep doing the exercises. All moms worry about getting their body back after having had a baby. This is my sixth time going through this and I've gained varying amounts with all my different pregnancies. The best thing to do is stick to a healthy, low sugar diet, just like you did during pregnancy, and to start to fit in exercise as soon as you can. Most women lose half the weight they gain during pregnancy during the first six weeks after their baby is born, but if it's taking you longer, you shouldn't worry about this because anything you wanna do when it comes to weight loss should be gradual. You wanna to aim to lose a pound to a pound and a half a week and avoid crash diets cleanses, or anything extreme. Getting outside and walking with your baby is a must. Here's some basic tips when it comes to losing weight. Do not skip meals. Eat many small meals a day. Opt for steamed or baked foods over fried foods. 
Cut out sodas and juices and opt for whole fruits. Limit sugar, fat, saturated fats, and trans fats. Opt for whole grains. Always eat something for breakfast. Slow down when you eat, tasting your food and enjoying it. And keep a water bottle near you and drink frequently. I've gotten in the habit of filling a thermos with cold ice water with lime or lemon and another one with hot fresh mint tea with cinnamon. These keep me hydrated during the day and the thermos keeps the tea hot all day long. For many mothers, breastfeeding, which burns approximately 200 to 400 calories a day, can really help with the weight loss. If you're breastfeeding, you don't want to start dieting until two months after your baby is born and your breast milk supply is established. At that point, you can follow some of the dietary tips I've just listed, but keep in mind that the breastfeeding is burning extra calories. At your six week OBGYN appointment, your OBGYN will likely be talking to you about birth control and will give you the go ahead when it comes to having sexual intercourse with your partner. You may or may not want to have sex given how you're feeling about all the monumental physical changes that you've been through. It's very, very common to experience fatigue, vaginal dryness, or lack of interest in sexual intercourse at this stage. I had horrible dryness after my first baby that started to go away over time and we did try using a lubricant, which was helpful. My advice with this is to take it really slow, to talk openly with your partner, explaining that it has nothing to do with them and to ask them to be patient. You should also look into whatever alternatives you can explore. A baby brings a lot of joy to a couple, but you also are so stretched for time and you wanna make sure that you still find time for your partner and continue to tell them that they also are a priority. Try to continue to schedule special things, a walk, a nice takeout dinner, maybe a dinner out where you get dressed up. Try to bring in a family member or a babysitter so that you can go out and feel like a couple again. A happy couple makes for a happy baby, so you wanna invest in both things to the extent you can. Learn from my mistakes and don't get into the whole daddy doesn't do it right or my partner doesn't do it right mentality where you set yourself up like the expert and you act like your partner doesn't know how to do things when it comes to the baby as well as you do, this is the opposite of what you want to do. Because rather than give support and building your partner up to feel as if they're a competent you know, caretaker when it comes to the baby, you're acting like the expert and they get more insecure and therefore less inclined to help you out. So don't do this. You want to build up your partner's confidence when it comes to taking care of the baby. And in the end, this is a lot better for you too because you're gonna get a lot more help. Breastfeeding a six week old baby. Experts advise not letting your baby go more than three hours between feeds. So let me pop up that schedule again right here just for your convenience. 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m., and then 2 a.m. or when the baby wakes up and 6 a.m. or when the baby wakes up. Try to keep your baby awake by changing their diaper or changing their outfit so that you can ensure that they are awake and full before you end a feeding. Remember to start with one breast and to empty that breast before going to the next breast so that your baby can get as much hind milk as possible and try to pump for five to 10 minutes after each feed using a strapless pump bra so that you can equalize the amount that you're asking each breast to produce and stimulate your milk production. I'm repeating the information from prior weeks here for your convenience. Formula fed babies should have two to 2.5 ounces of formula for every pound of body weight over a 24 hour period for the first six months of life. That translates to about 20 to 25 ounces for a 10 pound baby, or approximately three to four ounces per feed. Although some experts say you can feed your baby every five hours, I wouldn't go that long because you do really wanna start encouraging your baby to eat less frequently during the night. So all that having been said, let's take a quick look at the schedule for a baby this age who is formula feeding. 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., 7 p.m., 11 p.m., and 4 a.m., or when your baby wakes up. 
make sure your doctor agrees that you can allow your baby to sleep and wake up on their own during the night. You can't really generalize when it comes to preemie babies, but I do want to share something with you guys that I've noticed from having now been in the NICU for six weeks. I always dreaded and really feared giving my babies bottles in the early days because I thought that the bottle was easier to suck from and that my babies would no longer want to breastfeed from the breast and that this would cause tremendous difficulties when it came to breastfeeding and my milk supply. Preemie babies upset the whole apple cart when it comes to this issue because they just don't have the strength sometimes to feed from the breast because the sucking takes so much more energy and it's just less energy and requires less strength for them to feed from a bottle. So as I walk around the NICU and I've made some buddies there by now, really wonderful people that I hope to stay in touch with, I've seen a lot of moms who are pumping and they're alternating breastfeeding and bottle feeding with their preemie babies. This is in effect what's happened also with Bracey because I've only been able to be there during the day to feed him. So he's been having bottles at night when I leave. He's been having a bottle at nine, at 12 midnight, at three in the morning, at six in the morning, and at nine in the morning, I usually get there after that. And then I try to do the 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and 6 p.m. feeding. So as you can see, I'm not even covering half the feedings when it comes to breastfeeding, and Bracey's now 36 weeks old in terms of gestation. So I was really worried about this and I asked the nurse about it. And she's like, no, he loves breastfeeding and he's always going to like it. I really wouldn't worry about it. And do the same thing when you go home, Melissa. If you have to give a bottle, you know, you have five other kids, just give a bottle and don't stress so much about making sure to always feed him from the breast, which could be a lot more time consuming. So with that bit of information having been shared, let me just say something quickly about what are called late preterm babies. Late preterm babies are babies born between 34 and 36 weeks of gestation, and these babies account for 75% of all premature babies in the U.S. and 8% of all births. Many babies born at this stage can go skin to skin with their mothers from the get-go, but others will need help with their breathing. If you have a late preterm baby in the NICU, and the doctors will be explaining this to you, Keep in mind that it's not just your baby's weight that the doctors will be looking at when it comes to readiness to go home. Rather, your baby's ability to eat well, not having jaundice, and their ability to regulate their body temperature are all going to be factors that the doctors will be looking at in addition to their weight. On his six-week birthday, Bracey weighed 2.410 kilos, nearly a full kilo more than what he weighed at birth. and he got the best piece of news that we've had thus far. Bracey is coming home tomorrow. Anyway, since he can now maintain his body temperature and he's eating on his own, we're bringing our little baby home. Anyway, this is the first time I've ever cried in a Cloud Mom video, and I just want to thank anyone who's watching my videos so much for your support. This has really kept me going during the six weeks it's been an absolute joy to be learning all this stuff right alongside you guys. And I'm so much looking forward to trying to like impart everything I've learned and everything I'm learning over the coming year with my little baby boy who's going to be home tomorrow. Thank you guys all so much. And I'll see you next week for week seven.